Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's good to have everyone join us tonight. Uh, I thank God for you taking the time out of your busy schedule today uh, to come to Facebook Live tonight that we may continue to grow, learn, and live together in the Word of God. And so I pray you have gathered your family together, or if you're just by yourself, uh, for an opportunity for us to, to learn. Uh, don't forget, you can chime in with your comments. Please invite, share, and we are looking forward to your comments as well. And if we get them, if we can address them while we're doing the Bible study, because this is a Bible study, we want you to actually uh, uh, go ahead and just type them in and we'll get to them as we go. Uh, thank God that we have uh, been doing this for several weeks now. And we're so grateful to the Lord for this opportunity to do this. Um, please don't forget uh, to our Robert Chapel family uh, to continue to give. Uh, I want to thank all of you who have been sending in your tithes and your offering uh, via mail, as well as some of you have paid uh, through our donate uh, icon on our website. Thank you so very much because ministry still has to go forth and you are still being a Part of what God is doing in the earth today. Uh, I want to uh, direct your attention uh, to Hebrews 11 chapter. Uh, last week we started talking about faith. We defined it uh, and we also had some great discussion about faith and uh, how it can be challenged uh, throughout our lives. Uh, and as Paul had said in the word, word, it's good to know that you're fighting a good fight. Of faith uh, because you're fighting one way or another so I I made up in my mind and I hope you have as well that if you're going to fight you want to fight in faith uh, because right now that's what the body of Christ should be doing Amen. so having said all that we're gonna ask if uh, uh, our usual participants we're missing our brother tonight uh, brother Derry wherever you are uh, we thank God for you it's great talking with you today but we miss you tonight but we still have Denise and we still have a vet here tonight and uh, we have our camera crew with us. Uh, we had a little praise and worship a little earlier, so uh, Morticia led us in that tonight. So it's one big family effort uh, doing this thing in love uh, for the honor and glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So having said that, come on, sis. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We are excited about your word and we look forward, Lord, to learning more about your word and actually carrying it out, Lord. Thank you for all the participants, the listeners, both by phone and by Facebook, Lord. We thank you for just blessing us in whatever state we're in right now. We just call it call it a blessing. Yes, in Jesus' name, Jesus amen. 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 It's okay. I know right there in your home you can put your hands together. And if you amen. haven't all day long, you might want to lift your hands and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's been good to us. He woke us up again this morning. We got a little choir going on in the background, as you, you can see. Uh, thank God for them. Thank God for them. So let the church yes say amen. amen. Uh, I want to pick up uh, where we left off. Uh, we read through the first 14 verses of Hebrews 11. Uh, but I want to begin reading tonight in verse 8. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Uh, and it reads as thus. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelled in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as, a, as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. I'm going to stop there because I want to finish this particular portion and then we'll pick up in verse 13. Uh, so um, faith is 
critical, it's important to our lives, as all of us have agreed as we've been studying and walking uh, in, in the Word of God uh, as part of our life. Uh, we said a whole lot of things the last time we were together, so we might go back to them and embark on some of them every now and then. So as they come to mind, please feel free to do that. And also in your comments, you can do that as well. Uh, so we start by saying, or in this first verse we read in verse 8, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. So why do you think that uh, as the writer, and we discuss who, who the controversy behind the writer of Hebrews, some think Paul, some think one of his students, uh, other theologians think it was Apollos that, that wrote the book. Why do you think that he mentions Abraham here? What's so significant about Abraham? Do, 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 do. So Abraham was the one who demonstrated that he was going to do whatever God had him to do. And his greatest example was sacrificing or attempting to sacrifice okay. his firstborn. All right. All right. So uh, Abraham is also called the what? The father of faith. The father of faith, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it goes back to some original uh, bases that God had established with Abraham. Uh, he established a covenant with him, right? Mm -hmm. And so Abraham trusted God, so it took faith. And so we call him the father of faith and the father of do, 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 many, many nations. nations. All right, many nations. I, I, I was just waiting to see if you go with him. And so it says that Abraham obeyed God. So when God told him to leave, uh, did he do it? He went so, not knowing. Oh, so he went out not knowing. Where so, he was going. And when he left, he left who? When he started on his journey, who did he leave? Okay, so he left his mom and his daddy. His daddy was very wealthy, yeah. right? And so he for, he forsook all that he was enjoying as a young man growing up and decided to trust God in the blind. Mm -hmm. For we walk by Faith. And not by size. That's Corinthians, ain't it? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Yes, it is. So it, it, that can be found in Corinthians. It's a great Wednesday. It's a great Wednesday. And so as a result, so he, he decided to let everything go and do exactly what God told him to do. So he took this journey. Now, God told him to go somewhere. Did he go there initially? Okay, so he stopped halfway, right? He stopped halfway of where God told him to go. So uh, delayed obedience is still disobedient. disobedient, no matter what. But yet, what we're finding as we read this 11th chapter of Hebrews, that even, and it happens to us even to this day, doesn't it? Yes. God tells us to do things, and sometimes we do them our own way, or when we get ready to do them, delayed obedience is still disobedience. But God is still faithful. Yes, he is. Yes. God is still faithful. And even through this, Abraham still gets called the father of faith. Yes. Is that good? Is that good? And so he, he goes out, right, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelled in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. And, of course, those are his, his boys, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so... Uh, and they, because they were with their dad, they were under the same promise, right? Mm -hmm. Under the same promise. So we'll find out what this promise is, or do you know already? It's a covenant he made with God. Okay, so he made a covenant. That, that's from the, the chairs over here. Uh, that's a covenant that God made with him, and he made with God. Okay, but do you know what the promise was yet? Yet in that. Do you know right now? Oh. Can you remember what the promise oh, okay. is? That they were, um, that he was going to be given um, the promise. Okay. 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 That many, that many nations would come out of him, right? Uh, if he would just be obedient to who God is calling him to be. Yes. I know I'm pulling your teeth today. So, so here we are. So he says, now this is amazing. Now you think about this. Uh, he's comfortable. He's living well. And all of a sudden God speaks to him and he says, I want you to leave this. Drop everything you got. Leave all your wealth. Leave, leave your job. How about that? Leave, leave the familiar and then trust me into where I'm going to take you. 
And if you do it, then I'm going to bless you real good. How many people do you think really do that today? Not me. Not Why? Me. But you think he did it because he felt like he was going to be blessed? That, that's a good he question. Just, he was just being he, faithful. Do we all start out being faithful? No. No. I no. mean, I, I can't answer. You know, we can't answer for anybody else. What, what about we don't today? answer for ourselves. What because about today? A lot of times, unfortunately, people see things, but they, they feel like, I don't understand. I, I Okay, I'm backing up. I don't understand <laughs> why would we feel like we got to be faithful. When I say faithful mm -hmm. to God, mm -hmm. I mean, we know that he's, I mean, why he has to be faithful to us is what I mean. Okay. Um, but the thing is, it's just like, are you doing it for a reason? It's almost like, why do you serve? Do you serve because of the person that's in charge? Or do you serve because you believe that this is something that God wants you to do? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So why am I being faithful? Mm -hmm. So am I looking for something back? Okay. Is that why I'm being faithful? Or am I just hearing from God and just moving out just because I believe God said so? Mm -hmm. Or am I looking for something on the other side? Mm -hmm. Could it be because what God has for you is always going to be bigger than what you want or have for yourself? So then if she not talk, she may be. You have to move to the table, please. Yeah. Oh, I can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it pulls from that. Uh, <laughs> so I think that we have difficulty um, moving out and trusting God. You do. No matter how, in general, no matter how you know saved we say we are, we I think because of our comfort zones, because of our inability to just, you know, go and do what God is telling you to do. I think sometimes we struggle with that initially. And then to be given a directive to go and do something seemingly as bold as this, <laughs> you know, you'll sit back and go, oh, is that God? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it, for the average person, it does cause you to kind of stutter step mm -hmm. or you know, even back up a little bit to question, okay, that, that might not that might not be because you want to go because ahead and see what the end is gonna be before the end comes. You understand what I'm saying? If I know where I'm going, which does not require faith, if God said, you know, you hear a lot of people testify or have testimonies about God, you know, they, they asking God for something, seeking God for an answer, and they get the answer, but it doesn't sound like it doesn't look like something. The way they think it should look, I'll put it that way. It doesn't look the way they, so then it's like, I don't know, God, is that you? Is that you talking? Because it really takes a blind faith to just stop and do what he did and just say, okay, God. But people do it. Mm -hmm. I kind of, sometimes I'm in awe of those people because it's just like, you're just going to drop everything and you're just going to do what God said do. And you don't even know what the end is going to be. That's a trust and that's a, that's a, a, a supernatural faith. To me, that's a more of a supernatural faith because we understand what the word says that he will provide for us. But if I had to leave all of everything that I've worked hard for, I don't know. Okay. Uh, th there's some dynamics to this. Remember, I, I know. I told you we wanted to get to the table. Uh, because when we first start this thing out, it says, now faith is the substance of things Hope for, right? The evidence of things not, not seen. seen. For it, and that's verses one and two, yeah. for it, by uh, it, the elders obtained a good report. report. So we, we've got to know that when you're when you're trusting God, or God gives us a command, he gives us a, us a directive to do something, if you know that he is God, and he rewards, that's what we read last time, he rewards those who diligently seek him, then what you would say in your mind is that because God loves me, right? And whatever he asks me to do, it's going to work out for my good, so I'm going to trust him no matter what. Whether I get whatever, you know, like some people say, you know, they're looking for the prize at the end of the rainbow, whatever they say, you know, but I'm doing it because I know that if I'm obedient to the Lord, I'm good no matter what. I'm good no matter what. And so here is Abraham. Abraham is saying, first, God, I hear you. Because first, it, it, and it doesn't, you know, where we at right now, you would have to go back to Genesis to look at how he develops his relationship with the Lord. Because he builds trust along the journey. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. See, along the journey. He builds his trust. And, and God not only, God saying, look, first of all, I'm going to ask you to do it. 
Now, th now that's interesting for all of us today when you think about God knows you. Mm -hmm. So he sees things in us that we can't see in ourselves. And what we have to do is trust God that when he chooses us, because every one of us, we are a chosen generation. Every one of us who have been chosen by God have got to have enough in us to say, all right, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned earlier, most people, no. I ain't going to be able to do but that. But you know where I think that that unbelief comes from? Because I was just thinking to myself. Okay. Because it's like you said earlier, like we read in the word last week, that he, first you must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes our doubt comes from who we are or who we know we are or who we know we aren't. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like if you got parents, you ain't gonna ask them for something. It's almost like if I come to you and I be like, Dad, you, gonna, you, you, you got that money? Then you'll be looking at me like, uh, but you didn't do what I asked you to do. So a lot of times, a lot of people have doubt and unbelief because of their own personal relationship that they know. When I say they don't, they they know they don't have with God. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't feel, I mean, I don't feel worthy on a regular, but if you're not diligently seeking him, then it's going to be, it's going to bring in doubt to will I get what I'm asking for? Because you know that you're only seeking him because you you're asking for you want something. something. Because you're asking for something. <laughs> that's unfortunate, but it is true. You know, it's you know, yeah. it's, it's so that's why our doubt unbelief comes from, and our faith walk dwindles if we know that we're not in position to receive what we're asking for. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden now I'm in the word all the time. All of a sudden, now I want my faith to really be built. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, now I'm pulling from my past like, God, if you did it before, you can do it again. Like, but as long as things were going good and I was fine or I wasn't, you know, needing God in my regular everyday walk, then I was just kind of loose with him. I, was, I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? So, so we said before that our faith is going to be challenged. It will yes, be challenged. it will be challenged. It will be challenged. Um, and we must grow in our faith walk. Correct. Uh, so along the journey, you remember when you first got saved? You know, uh, you guys remember that watching from home? Uh, when you first got saved? When you first got saved, uh, you you were so, uh, for lack of better terms, you were so gullible that whatever God God, God would just you believe anything you, you believe you believe you like hey <laughs> God done yes. pulled me out He done saved me pulled me out of all that mess that I was in and now I'm on a different path that's going to be for my good and so God would just bless you just out of the blue because He He is wooing you He's pulling you in and, and you build you build your faith at some point along your journey it it became a climb. Because now your faith is, is being tested. Because before he has you on that easy flat road. You, you ever worked out before, you know, and, and you want to run the flat road? Because the flat road is so easy. You know, you're like, all I got to do is just worry about the rhythm of my breathing and I'm good to go. But once you start climbing that hill, it's going to require you to put a little bit more effort in it. And I believe in the body of Christ, it's the same as we build our faith. God is going to stretch you. He's going to allow you to be stretched. Sometimes, think, know this, it's not always uh, the devil that is stretching your faith. Many times God will allow your faith to be tested to see if you don't have it right directly in your hand. You can't see the finish line. Yourself, yeah. You can't see the prize at the end of the finish line. But you know that there is one there and he wants to see if you and I will still run. Yes. If we'll still stay the course and we won't give up. That, that's what God looks for in us. And Abraham was one of those that said, I'm willing I'm willing to go out here, and, and as we know his story, did he mess up? Yes. 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 More than once? Yes. yes. All right. So, but God was still faithful. That's the good thing about faith, mm -hmm. is that God is going to be true to his promise. Mm -hmm. What you and I, and I challenge everyone in watching, what we have to do is walk in faith. God, don't worry about the promise. We walk in faith. God will always take care of the promise. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that's, that's good. good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That was good to hear. It was good. I'm just trying to be good. 
And then it says, by faith and nine, he dwelt in the land, right? Mm -hmm. It was a foreign country, a place he had never been before. And he, they dwelt in tents, right? Why do you think it mentions that they dwelt in tents? Yeah, yes, from the gallery. Because of what he left. Okay, okay. Uh, the gallery said, uh, 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 what Tisha said, because of what he left, okay? Anybody else? So the tents were kind of a, um, a less than permanent structure. Oh, no, I'm going to read it. Oh, so, that's good. Come on, yeah, let him lead you. It was something that they would, you know, they would have to they'd have to be ready to go and could easily move forward with, mm -hmm. at, at a moment's notice. That's good. So so it wasn't intended for them to stop right. until God said, this is your promised land. So, Remember? so he, wouldn't put, he, he, just, he wasn't putting down stakes because he understood that he was still supposed to keep moving. God had not said to him, even though God said to him to move, go, yes. he yes. Didn't, had he not said that he going. should stay. Yes, yes. yes. See, the, the promise was, as we, if you read the story, you know, down line, because we fast forward them real quick. The, the promised land was that they would move into the land of Canaan. Right. So it, it, once, you, once you put your stakes down somewhere, yeah. you build a permanent dwelling you place, do. then what you say, and this can be spiritual too. Yes. What, once, you, you, once you say, I'm good, God ain't got to take me nowhere else, now you begin to limit God. Yes. And, and you're telling God at this point, this is what I want. God says, I got a bigger promise than where you stop. But many times we'll stop because we get complacent and we get happy where we are. But God says, I'm always moving. I'm always start, in so your future. You, so you think sometimes people just stop, stop listening or stop hearing because they've already decided, even if God hasn't decided, that I like it here, so I'm going I'm to stay here, yep. here for a while. And yep. they, they're no longer seeking God in that same situation. That's right. That's exactly right. That's and, and we cannot do that because we we tie God's hands. Yeah, that makes we, sense. We tie God's hands. Uh, I know we, oftentimes we think that we can't tie God's hands, but we can. Mm -hmm. We can tie his hands when we get to this point of where we're saying, oh, God, you know, this is where I'm at. I don't want you to do anything else for me. But I'm so glad that the examples, and, and that's what that's we're going to find when we're looking at this chapter, mm -hmm. is that you're going to find countless number of names mm -hmm. that okay. God used to walk in faith, to show you and me, all of us that are watching tonight, in your home, it doesn't matter what you've been through, it doesn't matter where you come from, who you were born to, God can use anybody that he wants to bring forth his promise. Amen. He can use anybody he wants to bring forth his promise. All that we have to do is to stay in faith. Mm -hmm. To trust God no matter what. And so, so there he has his boys with him, right? Mm -hmm. Isaac and... Jacob. Jacob, right? Okay, great. And, and, and so as a result, he says that, for he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God, right? Mm -hmm. So he he's waiting on God. Basically. That's why he says, I won't, as you mentioned, you know, that I'm not I'm not gonna put down a permanent dwelling because the city is not here yet. Right. The city is not, we're not in it yet. And we should be saying the same thing today. Yes. This is this is not where we end. Right. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And there where I am, you will be there also. You can come go with me too. Yes. Ain't that good? Yes. That, now that's a promise. That's and a promise. we know that his promises are yes, yes, yes. and yes. amen. So as a result, you and I, we, we're foreigners. That's why I said here, even with Abraham, he's in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. We're in a foreign country. Oh, Lord. We are. We don't act like it. Right? <laughs> That's true. That's because we don't put these roots down. We don't bought these houses. We don't, and, and we act like we're, we're staying here forever. But, yeah. but we're here. Yeah. So we can't ignore the fact that we're here. Okay? <laughs> this may be just a pit stop, but we're still here. <laughs> What's that old song they used to sing? Uh, I don't know. Don't need to escape me now. Okay. But it has some I'm lyrics to it where it's like, uh, if heaven is not my home, somebody, somebody online, somebody yeah, online, no, they ain't, 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 they
Uh, anyway, go ahead. Somebody put it in the Facebook. And we'll yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good song. It's a good song too. It's a good song. So, so he goes on, and, he, and then eleven brings in Sarah, who is who? His, His wife. wife. His wife. Abraham's wife. Okay. By faith, if you notice, all of these verses are starting by faith. By faith. Mm -hmm. We faith. should live our lives by faith. By faith. And by faith. By faith. So Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child whose name was do 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 Sarah Sarah okay there you go Isaac when she was past the age okay. because she judged him faithful who had the promise who had the promise who had the promise who had the promise God. okay God had the promise yes. right yes. God had, but she knew he was faithful to his promise now why do you think this comes up. Let me draw in 12 real quick. Is that good? Yeah. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Why do you think this is put in? Why do you think the writer puts this piece in as well? To show us that Abraham, who was, I can't remember how old he was, mm -hmm. but he was... Up in age, as they say, with, before he had his first child. Can, can she had. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's not, good. That's not good. her. You're right. Okay. That's good. That's good. Before, You're right. Before, uh, no, I, I was saying it from this perspective. I'm saying it from the perspective of this. Before Sarah yeah, has right. a child. Yeah. Because he has another child yes. named Ishmael, Ishmael. right? Uh -huh. uh, by Hagar, right? Yes. So, right? So before the promised child, yes. right, is born. Remember that we're talking about faith and promise, right? So God takes care of the promise if we'll walk in Faith. And this is so critical, and we won't have time to cover it tonight because we know Sarah and the maid servant called Hagar. Uh huh. Conjure up this deal yes. to say that God has been taking so yeah. long with this promise Trying that he gave to my husband. So let me help God out. Mm -hmm. Listen, God will fulfill the promise. Mm -hmm. You walk in faith. Don't take matters into your own hand. Your husband is coming if you stop. You said I just wanted to come from somebody else. You, if you stop just trying to find everything like a baby in the candy store, feeling everything that's out there, because you want to see how it tastes, and that goes on every side of the track. Trying to help God Wait out. Wait on God. Wait on God. If you, if you believe in God for the new job, wait on God, but you got to get up and fill out some applications. Okay, let me go. All right, <clears throat> that was just that was for free right there. So you are so right because there was no way in the natural yes. that Abraham was yeah, going to yeah. have a child. Right. So it took God, right? And God. then Sarah has this baby boy, and his name is Isaac, Isaac right? Uh -huh. And she judged God to be faithful. <clears throat> Why did they call him Isaac? What does his name mean? Oh. Okay, I'm going to help you out. Yeah. You ready for the hint? Go. The hint is, uh, this is what she did when she heard God. Oh, she laughed. She uh -huh. laughed. That's right. Uh -huh. yes. So Isaac means laughter. Laughter. That's right. Laughter. Is that good? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just trying to see what he had. You know, every now and then I got to throw something in there. Which is an example of how she did not have come the on. faith to believe come on, girl. Come on, girl. that she could actually have a child. Yes. Now, can you, that's the natural. Huh? That's the natural because naturally she probably should not have been. So, I mean, you know, a lot of times when it, it takes God waiting until we can't do something ourselves for him to step in for us to know that it was God. Even, right? at, even after you mess up. Even after but she mess messed up. But she messed up because they, but they so did Abraham. Help. Yeah, they thought they could help God out because yep. Abraham didn't have to do it. You're yep. right. Yep. It's, but at the same time, it's, it's more, it's like your flesh versus your spirit every time you make a decision that involves your, your spiritual life. Because mm -hmm. some people don't want to deal with the natural part of it, but you have to. Because the bottom line is, is that naturally, she should not have been able to. I would have been like, Lord, yeah, right. Okay, so you're going to wait time 99, 98, 97, tomorrow. please. Hey, but if you can do it. I'll take it. You but, know. But, but, but let me ask you this, because part of faith means that you're waiting. Yes. 
But they also had to do something. So, to, it so, ain't like she just popped up miraculously. Yeah, so, you know what I mean? So, so they walked in it. So from the first Sam. time, that, so from the first time that God, this uh, for everyone watching, that you can throw it in the comments. Uh, this is your trivia question. From the first time God tells Abraham, mm -hmm. by that time now he's Abram, and then he changed his name to Abraham, right? He says, "You shall have a son, who will be the promise." How many years passes before Isaac is born? That's your trivia question tonight. Put it in the comments. You can do your research when you get ready. But that is a great question. I, I got the panel over here and in the gallery. They, they right now they're giving them they're giving me them faces right now. The question is: from the time God gives Abraham the promise that he will, he and Sarah will have a son, how many years pass before Isaac is born? Yes. Y'all y'all be careful because I know y'all will go to Google real quick, but I ain't, I ain't hating you. I ain't hating you for it. I'm just asking you to throw it in the comments. Throw it in the comments, okay? That way I know who I got online who's listening to me right now. Throw it in the comments. Panel, don't you give them the answer. If you know the answer, then you write it on your piece of paper. But put it in the comments. Is that good? Okay. How many years pass? You've got to be faithful to know that God will do exactly what he says he's going to do. What would have messed me up? This is just Josh. What would have messed me up is... When I conjure up this plan with Hagar, and oh, yeah. he goes into the tent with this woman, and he is able to perform and get her pregnant, oh, that would have messed me up. Well, I mean, he didn't go in there thinking he what? So, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so, Lord have mercy, yeah, we got to keep this right because you're on live. So the reality is, what you might be saying, what, are we saying this? This food for thought. Are we saying this? And I'm going to say this the, the, the right way uh, because we want to keep our thing posted. So you're saying that he had the ability to go in, but he didn't have the ability to have a child? No, I'm saying another he... Story. No, no, there's another okay, story. Okay, so that's the wrong thing. Yeah, no story. Now, actually, <laughs> elaborate on that because that's an interesting, that's an interesting concept. We got a question. We got a what you got? We got two. Twenty. Miss Jackie said twenty-five years, and Miss and Peggy says twenty-five years. Okay. So is it twenty-five years? Okay. We give you the answer at the end. Give you the answer at the end. At the end. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. I right, keep you tied in. So then, then we move on. So we know that that's a great, uh, a, a great uh, story to tell. Right. When you think about from Abraham to Sarah, right? right. Mm -hmm. then, then he says this. Thirteen. These, these all died in faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off from, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Right? right. So, so what does that mean? That's, says, one, that's one of my favorites because they died. Some people, when they, well, when they said died, never receiving the promise. I think they were talking about the promise of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm -hmm. they, they, even though people have been talking about he's coming, he's coming, he's coming and believing that, you know, Christ is coming, a savior is coming, they died before it happened, okay. but they still believed it. They died in faith, never okay. receiving or having seen the promise. So but everybody, that it was coming. everybody we mentioned before, it says these all died in yeah. faith, mm -hmm. not having received the Promise. promise, right? Okay, good. Okay. Now, you know, we got to take a journey. Okay. Uh, go to Genesis 12 and 7. What does it say there? Genesis 12 and 7. You want me to read? You got it. Genesis. Got that? Genesis okay. 12 and 7. You got another one? Mm -hmm. Do you have another one? Yep. Are you ready? Yeah, you take the second one. Yeah, I'll take the first one. The, the next one is John the 8th chapter and the 56 verse. Okay. So, Genesis 12. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Got your phone book. Genesis 12 and 7. It didn't even sound right. I was glad. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Okay, good. So hold that. What you got there? John 8 58 says, 56. John 8 56 says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. 
and was glad. Okay, good. So, so now understand this. This promise you, you were talking about before, you, you talk about they never saw Jesus, right? They never saw it. But the promise was entering into a promise. promised land. Okay. That, that, that was your original covenant, right? Mm -hmm. That they would, he would be a father of many nations, you know, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And that his people would live in their land. Is that okay. good? Mm -hmm. That they would live that in their sense. land. Is that good? Mm -hmm. And so, and, but they knew that we're just strangers. We're just strangers passing through, right? Uh, this, this earth is not my home. Yeah, my, yeah. I, I'm just passing through. I've got a mission that I'm on. And then 14 says, for those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland and mm. truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out they would have had an opportunity to return but now they desire a better that is a heavenly country therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Mm -hmm. That is so important for us to know that. Now, now I want to say this because there, there are so many people as growing up as a, as a boy, and many of you can attest to this that are watching tonight. Uh, you heard your grandma and great grandma and even your mom and all, they talked about, you know, uh, making it to heaven. And we all want to go, right? We all want to go. Uh, and, and we don't, we, we just don't want to get there. We want to reign with Christ forever. Mm -hmm. However, I want to remind you and challenge you that while you're living in this foreign land, you can enjoy heaven mm -hmm. on earth. Amen. You don't have to wait till the sweet by and by. Yes. You, you, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to always be, you know, well, that's the way God wants me to be, not to have anything. No, that's not true. That's not true. You can have all the promises while you are yet yes. living in this fleshly body. Amen. Your spirit man will go to the heavenly place that has been prepared for you. That's the great city that we will inhabit with Jesus. John says, and lo, I looked and I saw a new Jerusalem coming yes. down. That's another Bible story. Uh, but I want you to understand that. But they, they went off of what God had told them. I will ensure that as many children as you are going to have, as a father of many nations, they are going to inhabit a land that's called their own. Amen. Is that good? Amen. All right. All right. So, so 17, is that good? By faith, here go Abraham again. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Uh, you said that early. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of yes. whom it was said in Isaac your seed shall be called concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from which he also received him in a figurative sense what does that mean that's complicated okay so let's take it bite at a time okay. so so Abraham's son is Isaac. He's the promise, right? right? And he tells him through him, God tells Abraham through your lineage, through your seed, right? Uh, you're going to have nations, all that good yes. stuff, right? So here is Isaac. And, and so Yvette, you said earlier that uh, Abraham did what with Isaac? Okay, so he took him up to where God told him to take him again. Yes. And, and he was going to take his boy. His yes. son. He wasn't a baby boy, by the way. I want I want y'all to know that he wasn't some little boy. You know, he was actually a grown, grown man almost. So when his daddy said, "Look here, man, we're gonna take this journey. We're gonna take this journey up here," and he realized there was no sacrifice, he was like, "So where the sacrifice at, daddy?" And, and his dad said, "God will provide." Right? Uh, not knowing that he was the test. He was a test. Can you lay down some things that you really love? Can you give them up? Not only laying down things that you love, laying down something you know God gave you. Oh. Why would God give it to me and then ask me to sacrifice it? Oh, girl, I feel a preach come up here by spirit. You hear me? I mean, why would it? <laughs> because you know that he's uh -huh. a miracle uh -huh. to begin with. Uh -huh. So you're going to ask me to give up my miracle? Okay. 
I mean, but the thing is, is that if you've already blessed me, it's almost like my faith has already been, what's the word, not tested, but my faith has already been, I can't think of the word. You, yes. Like, you already proved to me, you, you know, you that you're God. Do, yeah, that you're God. Mm -hmm. So, hey, so why, 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 why should I doubt you now? Why you got to take me to another level? Yeah. And why? I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of questionable things, but the thing is, it's just like, okay, God, hey, if you need, it's like you said earlier, this is not where I'm supposed to stop. So if he, if, if, if I trust him and I know that he did before, then he speaks to me and he asks me to do something else, then it's almost like, why wouldn't I just go ahead and do it? You know what I mean? But then you have some people that will question God and say, okay, now I asked you for this job. I know you ain't telling me to leave, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So but see, that's why he got the title, I believe. The father of faith. faith, yeah, <laughs> because he was walking and willing to do whatever God said to do. Yes, because he he already he already exercised that muscle of faith mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. up until this point. So, so he he was getting some power and faith this at that point. point. Okay. He really had it going on okay. in terms of you know yeah, yeah. his faith level. Yeah. Yeah. So you and I, you know, we'd have to think twice about it. Yes, but Abraham at this point had gone through so much. And God had already trusted him, uh, 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 forgiven him, and still kept being faithful to him mm -hmm. that he was able to, to do it at, at any yes. cost. But it's almost like if you have a testimony and you know God has brought you out of something and you just, you you walking in that testimony and then all of a sudden something happens to set you back and you looking like, okay. Sounds like life. Sounds like life. What what just happened? That sounds like life. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like life. Because now, now, in going back to look at this, uh, understand this. The reason this is highlighted is because God's promise, as you both have agreed to, was Isaac. Yes. He didn't talk to it. It doesn't say in the Bible, when you read the story, it doesn't say that he went and conferred with Sarah. He okay. automatically, God told him, this is yes, what I want you to do, uh, you know, to go and do the sacrifice. Well, at the end of the day, the reason this is so profound is because not only was it his son, but when we relate it and make it relevant to today, it is the thing you love the most. Are you it's willing? Are you yes? Are you with? But see, some people ain't got problems. Some people <laughs> just got things that they love the most. That's true. Are you willing to let it go for God? Uh, are you with? Because God, you don't know what God will say. He may tell you to move. Like he did them. He may tell you that I have greater things for you. Instead of you doing, I know you've been in the, in the corporate world for 25 years. You've done well. You've gotten promoted. But now is my time for you to walk in the divine purposes that I have for your life. So I'm asking you to leave that, that you love, that has provided for you, and walk with me. That is a tough walk of faith. Yes, it is. Because you got to be able to say that, okay, so I'm making X number of dollars every year, and I'm living pretty good. So if I, if I let everything go, because remember he told the disciples, drop everything and follow me. Can you have enough faith to know that God will sustain you? So he, he takes this one thing that he loves the most. This is every time I see him, he's like, man, oh, God is good. Come here, Isaac, come here. I just want to love you up just for a quick second because every time I touch you in the natural, it, it, you are proof yeah. that God is real. Yeah. And, and God says, well, guess what, dude? I'm going to ask you to lay this guy on the altar today. He's going to be the sacrifice. Because I don't know. Maybe he loved him too much. I, I, I don't know why God tested him, but sometimes God tests us or allow us to be tested Tested for his glory. Well, he, said he knew that God would provide because that's what he kept saying. God oh, will provide. Well, what you talking, girl? God so, he was walking in faith. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you read the story, yeah. because that's what this does, it gives you a chance to yeah. go back and read the story. Yeah. So it tells you that when he got to the point mm -hmm. to where he realized he was at the mountain, yes. he tells his servants, he says, hey guys, and I'm paraphrasing, he says, just watch. And we'll be back. So even in his and what he spoke was he was speaking he in faith it. Yeah. because it says this. He says, "If you give him to give him to me, right? Mm -hmm. Nineteen. If you give him to me, I'm believing that you can raise him up, even if I have to kill him. That's good. That's another hey. level of faith. Yes, it is. Yes, it to is. To say that if, if I kill this boy, mm -hmm. I know you're not going to let me come back down off this mountain without what you promised. Right. That's why we have to walk in faith and let God take care of the promise. Yeah. 
Amen. But they came back down. Yes. They came back down. But I also, can, can, I, can I just stretch it just a little bit more? I want to stretch it just a little bit more. This is also a, 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 a foresight of what is to come. Because God the Father, the same way he tests Abraham, he also goes through a test by saying, in order for me to save the world, I'm going to have to send my only begotten son. But this time, the son dies. What do you think about that? Praise God. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I, like, okay, 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 because I'm going to go somewhere on that. But no, right I need to finish what I'm yeah. talking he, he, God always has a plan. Yeah, exactly. Remember what we talked about exactly. last time we were together. Whenever God does something, he has a plan already in mind. He's Alpha and Omega. He's already seen it to the end. Yes. He's just coming back to see if you're willing to follow the journey so that you can get to the end. He already knows what's over there in, 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 in Jordan. He already knows what's over there in the promised land. He just wanted to know, will you just doggone it, be faithful long enough to just let me bless you? Because that's really what he wants to do. He really wants to bless us, but our faith is so, oh, wishy-washy. It can be. You know, and God is trying to build us so that we can, it's hard to step out and speak to the mountain, to tell the mountain to fall into the sea if you in the and out. That's right. God loves us all. We, we, we all covered by grace, right? That's the dispensation we're in today. But at the end of the day, God still holds you accountable for your level of faith. That's right. And he's like, at some point, how many times I got to bail you out? How many times do I have to keep doing this over and over again before you'll just trust me? Before you just trust me. That's what I believe. I'm just speaking on his behalf right now. You know, he just said, will you trust me? Will you trust me? I have done it so many times before. Will you trust me? Why do you keep going back? Stay with me. Stay in the game. We win. We win every time. And I want to challenge you today. Even while you're going through this process of being locked in, this is a great time to build your faith. It's a great opportunity for you to build your faith. It's a great opportunity to build your relationship with the Lord. Because yes, he will bring you out of this all right if you just stay in faith. Don't look at so much TV. Now, it's important you know what's going on around you. But don't look at so much that it consumes you in all your time. Lord, have mercy. Okay, I'm moving. <laughs> By faith. Is that good? Yeah. 20. Okay. By faith, Isaac blessed. Jacob and Esau, and, and, and who the old boy? Oh, God. Isaac's son. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. So, his sons. The, those are his boys? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'm just asking. That is a boy. Mm -hmm. Concerning things to come, okay? It says by faith, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, dying blessed each of the sons of Joseph. And worship leaning on the top of his staff. So there's something going on right here, right? So do you notice that things are being passed, passed down? down? Yeah. They're being passed down. Your faith and my faith should be passed down to our children. Yes. To our loved ones, right? Yes. But if they never see you operating in faith, how can you pass anything down? Can't do it. Preach, Pastor. Preach, Pastor. Preach, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's what. They, but you tell them that's, how they That's part of this whole. This part of this whole testimony. This whole. I mean, you know, the chapter that we're reading when we're talking about the witnesses or the um, those who walked in faith is to let, like we talked about last week, those people who we know came before they know knew came before them. Mm -hmm. This is how they walk in faith, and this is how you can too. So you have to have. We talked about that last week. You have to have a testimony. Mm -hmm. And people have to see you walking or have walked in or have witnessed your testimony so, of faith. So this chapter is specifically for us today. Yeah. Yes. Uh, not well, that the whole Bible isn't. Yes. But th this chapter is specifically for us today to show us that if others can do it, even when they stumble and mess up, so can we. Yeah. So can we because your promise has already been sealed. But you know, sometimes when other people, sometimes we forget I won't say we we forget on purpose, but sometimes when other people are going through and instead we beat them up, mm -hmm. you know, you saved. I don't understand why you right, ain't, you right. know, that kind of thing. 
as if we got it right every time yeah. we were going through yes. something. So our job and, and and it creates an opportunity for us to to say, I get it, I understand. I wasn't always perfect walking in my faith, you know, whatever whatever yeah. your testimony is. Why do you think it's important that when we see this uh, as we walk through this, because in, in, in some Bibles you'll find that this talks about the patriarchs. Yes. So but why do you think it's important that every time we read a verse, it, it not only it starts by faith, but it talks about Isaac, and it talks about Jacob, and then it talks about Joseph as, as we journey. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's that way? Because we know that most of, those, most of our patriarchs made mistakes too. I mean, they weren't perfect yeah. people. Yeah. They, 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 they did, but one, one of the reasons that is that way is because as the generations are passing, Down. they have not reached the promised land yet. So you got to, you, you, just like most of our, our, our younger generation today, many of them don't know the family tree well. That's they true. don't know the family tree well. Somebody you know, when we go to reunions and stuff, they say, who's that? Stop talking to her. That's your cousin, dude. That's not a guest that came with one of your cousins. That is your cousin and vice versa. So, so yeah, what that. happens even in these days, the patriarchs of okay. a family the had to pass it down. That's yes. why it says he, he, oh, he died. He leaned on his cane and said, son, let me tell you what God promised. The reason you're here today, the reason we have what we have is because of the promise that was given to Abraham, your great, great, great granddaddy. This is how we're here today. And we have to keep doing that. From generation to generation, no, no matter what happens. Amen. As you know where we are at Robert's Chapel, we celebrated last year 143 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And so the, it has to be passed from generation to generation. It doesn't matter whether you were born in the Robert's Chapel family tree, but if God assigned you there, you have to remember that God's promises are yes and amen. So people, you have to remind people, we, we have to remember where God brought us from, but you can't stay there because God has us on a journey. Don't build your tent on everything. Appreciate what your mom and all did. But, but, but don't forget that God gave them a message. And they took it as far as they can. Don't settle on this side of Jordan. Get to the other side. And so this is why it's important that they lay this thing down. By the time we get to 22, it says, By faith, Joseph, when he was dying made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his... Now, was Joseph alive when the children came out of bondage? Do -do -do. No, he wasn't. Mm -mm. But it says right here, by faith, when he was dying, he made mention. So that means that he believed the promise. He, he believed the promise. And, and, and Joseph, did you did you know that when Joseph died, now Joseph died when they were in captivity. How long? How long? Well. How long before when Joseph died, this is your next trivia, how long when Joseph died before, how many years passed before they brought his body out? Don't know. Don't look at that. Be shaking your head over there in the calorie. Just do your research over there. How long? Now, you ready for my next question? No. My next question is, did they bury Joseph in Egypt? No. Moses took the bones. <laughs> I remember. You know, I'm saying it. Come on. Get over here. You got to be sure now. You got to be sure. Come on. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That is right. Yeah. You were right. Okay. So, so we're going to Moses next, right? Yeah. Verse 23 is going to be talking about Moses. So under because Moses led him out. Yes, yes. Let him out. So so understand this. Joseph, when he talks to his boys, when he talks to the children of Israel, he tells, he gave them instructions concerning his bones. Right. Anybody know what those instructions were? Who you talking about the where to bury his bones? Yeah, what did they say about it? What, what, what was the instruction that he gave them about his bones? Somebody said to take him back to yeah. where his... Come on, man, come on, uh, man. Take him, bury me in the promised land, land yeah. in Canaan. So the answer to the question that I gave you earlier was they did not bury him. He, he died while they were in Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
And he told them, do not put my bones in the ground in Egypt. Let me remain above the earth and, and bear me only when we get to the promised land. He was above the earth in a coffin mm -hmm. for 400 years. Wow. Who took care of that coffin? <laughs> for 400 years. 400 years. <laughs> because <laughs> it, it was a visual reminder to the children of Israel that we are not in our home. Okay. Every time they saw that coffin, every time they saw they said, oh, that, that's a reminder. Even generations, because remember little kids running around, they said, why, why is Uncle Joe not in the ground? Because we cannot put him in the ground until we're in the promised land. And that would make them think, we, we're in slavery. Right. So, so that means what? We get up out of here yes. someday. So you got to understand that these are the kind of things to make it relevant today, that you and I have got to keep telling people, this is He's not it. This is not it. Jesus has come. This has been good, but this is not it. There's something like greater. So you can go to heaven. Yeah, and, and, and so he tells them this. He said, don't bury me. You leave me. And, and another question. You ready for this? You don't get your trigger if you got the night. Now, y'all weren't ready for that, but, you know, they had asked me earlier, what you going to ask us tonight so we'll know in advance? Hey, you got to do your own work. How long, how many years did it take for them to embalm Joseph? To embalm them, they were embalmed. Why do you know that? <laughs> it, it, it comes. It's significant. It's significant because numbers in the Bible in the Bible mean things. Oh, okay. So, so understand this. So that's just another trivial question for you tonight. You know, how 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 long did it take for them to embalm him? Uh, so, so understand. And the Egyptians does it. Yeah. <laughs> that's not cool. Hey, remember, he, he's not an Egyptian. So, by faith, <laughs> 23, I, I'm trying to get there. By faith, Moses, when he was born, when we'll close born, out on this one, was, uh, hid three, okay. was hidden for three months by his mom and daddy because they saw he was a beautiful child. I thought every mom and daddy did that. And they were not afraid of the king's command. What was the king's command? Kill all the male firstborn. Okay. Why? Because he heard about the promise. He heard about the promise? He heard that there was going to be a a son. A deliverer. A deliverer, yes. a deliverer was going to be born, right. right? They've been talking. And then it says, by faith, right, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Pharaoh's daughter did what? Captured him out of the picture. Okay, she pulled him out of the she pulled him out of the now, right? Okay, very good. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of, <laughs> of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the Reward. That's good. That, that's real good, ain't that's real good. So he says, so uh, the king, Pharaoh, has made me one of his own. But I'm not having it. But he had to, I mean, there it's like all this stuff working behind the scenes because he lived a certain lifestyle, but he heard about where he came from and he decided to to take on the faith. Of where he came from right. instead of where he was getting his livelihood. Mm. <laughs> I guess that can apply to today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember, God, we said this earlier. Whenever God does something, he has a plan. Yes. You have got, you and I, you and I have got to figure at home. You've got to figure out what role you play in the plan. That's good. God has allowed many of us our own permissive will. But have you ever slowed down? You got some time right now. <laughs> have, you ever, <laughs> have you ever slowed down to say, God, what role am I playing in the big plan? What role do you need me to play? What have you destined for my life? It's something to ponder on. Some things are forthcoming. There, there are a few that they know it early on. But then there are others that as we grow in faith, then he reveals. <laughs> then he reveals as we as we grow. Because here it is, Moses, now think about this, at this point, Moses really doesn't know his lineage. 
Then he comes of age and he realizes, he says, oh God, so you telling me what? God has allowed me to be taken out, spared. I've been educated by the best. I've been trained by the best for God's purpose. He could have, that's why we read this way in the scripture. It says that he could have stayed in the riches of yes. and treasures of sense. Egypt, but he realized God's riches were greater. How? He young. Who told him? But he, somebody told him. He, he, I mean, he knew his heritage. He knew his heritage. Because his sister. <laughs> Well, it's good to go back and read some of these stories because it, it, what this says to you and me is as we, as we think like this, and there's nothing wrong with it. It, it tells you, I need to go back now that I'm at this level in my faith. Now that I have, I have taken this time to learn more, I need to go back and reread that story to see what I missed. That it may not only be applicable for what was happening with Moses, but how would that be relevant to my life now? It's important that we do this uh, because sometimes you won't get from a Bible. Some things you won't get from a Bible study and open discussion. There are some things God wants to reveal to you when it's one on one time. But we're so busy that we don't give him one on one time. We really don't. We, you think about it. You, since you've been locked in, since you've been working from home, have you kept your same routine with God? Is it the same? You, you're not jumping in your car driving anywhere, some, you, unless you're an essential worker. You're not driving anywhere. So before, many of us, if you really want to be honest, we gave God the drive-by prayer. On my way to work, got my coffee in my hand. Lord, it's a great day. I'm happy to be alive. I appreciate you watching over us. And then you jump right into whatever you're jumping in. Has that changed? Have you, are you starting your mornings differently? Are you spending some Quiet time with him? Have you carved it into your schedule? Where is he at on your timeline? But you know, even, even in the process of what we're going through, when I say what we're going through, to be honest, we're really not going through anything um, because most of us, sometimes we can be, even, this, even though this thing is affecting the whole world, mm -hmm. sometimes it's like you're there, but you're not there. You know, you see it, you understand it, you understand that the possibility of it hitting closer to home than it does, mm -hmm. but just like any other thing that happens, if it doesn't hit you personally, sometimes you could be separate from it. I hear people who have jobs and are working from home complaining mm -hmm. about being home. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. You still got a job. You get a paycheck. And you get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And you complain about being home. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so sometimes we have to be reminded of how blessed we really are. And some people, I mean, I get overwhelmed because I'm I, every morning I'm like, not only thankful for us, but the, and not just our families, but people and people that we know. But are we seeking? Do we know people who don't have? You understand? Yeah. I don't really. I don't. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't personally know anybody that I've spoken to who said I'm out of a job. And I don't have anything so that we could try to come together to help them because we know that the government might, might be a little bit slow, um, if, if at all. Mm -hmm. And so as a community, not only can we be thankful for ourselves, but we can also do better at reaching out mm -hmm. to help others mm -hmm. any, way we, any way we can. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't do that well. Mm -hmm. yeah. we don't do there, that there are well. a lot of lessons to be learned. Mm -hmm. Uh, during this during this pandemic that we're experiencing, not only individually in our communities, in our churches, uh, because for many of us, it is put you you don't think it, uh, but God allows things to happen. It is pushing the church to do yes. something different, definitely, in order to get something different. That's right. Uh, and uh, we have to look at that across the spectrum. You know, so so you've been doing these long-standing traditional things forever in a day so it took this to to cause many of us to venture beyond the the normal boundaries uh and and, and what it does is it stretches our faith mm -hmm. you think about this and, and this has been part of my prayer I, I don't mention it much but i do know that some of my friends who are pastoring full-time 
this has impacted their, their lives. Churches, their, yeah, not just the church, church, but their lives. This this has been their livelihood yeah, ministry. Yeah. Not only with what they bring into their home, but how they take care of this People. brand new building yeah. that they just built, that they said God told them to do. Yeah. And, and, and having to trust God. Faith is good. Faith is being tested. It's, faith, yeah. it's being stretched. It's being tested. Yes. Uh, and, and we have to stay in the good fight of faith. You know that that's child. what. So that's why you know when we when when I believe God led us to look at Hebrews eleven, He says your faith, your faith is going to be. And, and it's at different. And it's at different levels. Thank you. It's at different levels. Uh, some faiths are, are are being tested uh, over here. Others are being tested in finances. Some is being tested in your relationship because you say you love your family, but what about now that you're locked in with them? <laughs> because your, your argument has always been, I'm the provider. So you, 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 because you say I bring home the bacon, you bring home the moolah, you bring home the cheese, you do all that, then that's your way of saying that's how I take care of you and that's your way of saying that's how I love you. But through this process, God is saying, yeah, you still might be making the money, but what about spending time with your son or your daughter? Or more importantly, what about spending time with your wife or your husband? It's, this time is going to put your, especially if you're saying that you are a Christian, especially if you're saying that you're in the body of Christ, I'm not saying that you're perfect, right. but this is giving you an opportunity that all that, that you've been wearing on your t-shirt, I'm unstoppable. <laughs> I'm above average. <laughs> I'm at Robert Chapel. Right? <laughs> all these things that we, and the stickers on your cars, and what everybody here you talking about. Oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed. But right now, some of those who wore those t shirts, they're saying, I'm stressed. You know, uh, and, and we've got to understand that this is a serious situation that is happening. We have been focused on the pandemic quite significantly. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but do you think? That the numbers that aren't being counted, for example, how many people do you think may have committed suicide because they can't handle being locked in? That there's a lot going on in the world right now that is stretching and testing the faith of the body of Christ yes. around the world. Yes. And some will step up and some won't. You, you, you're going to find right now who is in. And look, do, do you have times that your faith get weak? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying just because you, your faith gets weak or when it's being tested that you're not a Christian. What I'm saying to you is that these are the times that you don't know that are going to come. So when we have those moments to build our faith, we should build our faith so that when the test comes, yes, you'll be ready. we are ready to stand. Okay, you'll be ready. And it, it, that's my cry, you know, that's my prayer uh, that, uh, yes, I'm excited that we're doing this. Yes, I'm excited we're having the opportunity to bring the word of God to you by Facebook. But in my heart, my heart is crying for people to change. Amen. For minds to be renewed. Yes. Um, because we can read this scripture all day long and have great expository discussions about it. But at the end of the day, are we hearing what God is saying? Amen. Are, are we hearing him tell us, buckle down? Mm. I pull you away. You know, people still finding ways to, to I'm just saying this way. People are still, you on lockdown. Now, there are many places that are not have gone, gone to the complete restrictions yet. But some people are on lockdown and they're still finding ways to get into mischief. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. When, when, they, when they say in their mouths that they really want to trust God and live for God the way they want to live for God, but what they're executing, that's what you said earlier, that's the word you used earlier, what they're executing behind the dark door mm. is the hidden secrets of sin. And so you're saying that it's also an opportunity not only for God but for the enemy. As well, he, he's moving. He, yeah. he is moving. And, and, and I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day, and one of the things that he says, he says the devil is really, really mad a lot because he doesn't know how much God uses him to prove his point. He, he, he thinks he's operating on his own, but he said, my good friend said to him, he said, but sometimes he doesn't even know that God is using him to prove the point. He thinks he's in charge of something. 
but God is actually using him yeah. to prove his point, you know, or to bring him glory. You know, that, that, that this is so, it is so critical for us to look. These, these children, the children of Israel go through 400 plus years of bondage when they were a strong nation. And, and God, through, through his promise, what if God hadn't made a promise? Hmm. What if he never made a promise? What what oh, what would that mean for us too. today? Yeah. I know. What? Y'all, 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 this, this thing. I need something I just to hold on to. Saying, but but you 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 think about this. Um, not only does he does this, this, this is how true God is to his promise. That's why I said let God work the promise. But you got to do our part. We we all have to do our part. God puts them. He, he, I'm just saying it this way. He, he allows them to get into bondage. But yet, while they're in bondage because of his promise, it can't come back to him void. It's going to do what he said it's going to do. He builds them into a strong nation that when they come out, mm. they, they go in, they go in. Now, think about this. They go in about 230,000 deep, somewhere around there. They come out 1.7 million. So, so he, here he is. He says, I told Abraham that nations will come out of him that he wouldn't even be able to count. And so some people said, well, why do you just say 1.2, 1.7 million? Because the number varies. Well, why do you say that? Because what we're not realizing is that even with those that come out that are alive, they're going to have offspring. Yes. It, 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 so it's still, the, his offspring is still going today. We are a product of that covenant. We are, And, and we've got to see that when if God is still doing that, now in the earth, what else will he do? That's why I gotta I gotta hold on to my faith. Amen. I gotta build my faith and stop judging everything based on what I see. I gotta use everything God gives me. Yes. I gotta use some wisdom. Yes. I gotta use some common sense. And there are some things that are natural that are not spiritual. So yes. I got to learn how to balance so that the things that are natural, I don't make them into something spiritual. Yes. You got to call the dog the dog. It got fleas. Yes. It barks. Mm-hmm. It does. So that's a dog. That, that's what it is. Stop saying it's something that is not. And, and, and for us, when it comes to building our faith, it's the only thing. The old folks, you, you know, as you get older, you don't think about some of these things until, until, you, get uh, until you get older. The old folks used to say this. They said, well, son, faith is the is the key. Okay. And prayer unlocks the door. Okay. I never understood how they went together like peanut butter and jelly. So what it says is this. Your faith will bring you to the door. And if and if you have a faith mm-hmm. that you can get to the door, your prayers will open it up yeah. so that you can walk into your promise. Okay. But if you don't have faith, because the Bible says this, not, not Josh, the Bible says this, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Y'all might see on a praise team together. Y'all were in unison there. Uh, so, so, so as a result, so it says you can't even please God if you don't have it, mm-hmm. right? So, the role that prayer, when we look at every single one of these patriarchs that we are studying tonight, and I know we just got to 20, at the end of 26, right? How much prayer do you think went in? A lot. A lot. Because through the generations, they understood sacrifice. And every time they that God brought them through something, they offered a sacrifice. Oh, yeah. I see, see, and, and, and today we just want God to bring us through. We but don't what? Want sacrifice. We want sacrifice. Because sometimes, guess, guess. I'm just saying it this way. Sometimes, guess who the sacrifice is? Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We we, we, we don't want to lay down answer. nothing. We don't want to give up nothing. We we want God to do it all. We just saying, why me, God? Why can't it be somebody else? You what? Let the pastor go through it. Let 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 my mom and daddy go through it. Don't let me go through it because we're selfish. Yeah. 
This this faith thing is so real. It, imagine if Abraham stopped. Imagine if Moses stopped. Nothing would have happened. Mm -hmm. Now now they messed up because remember Moses. Moses got kicked out, didn't he? Yes. That, look, isn't that what it said right there? It says this right here, right? It says uh, this is your clothes. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, mm -hmm. for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So he talking about who there? Invisible. God. Oh, God. God, right? And by faith, Sorry. he kept the Passover and, and the sprinkling, sprinkling of the blood, blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should uh. touch. We got to stop there because that's another, yeah. that's another level of discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes us somewhere else because it said he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Not worrying about the guy he could see. Here's Pharaoh. He lived with him. He, he see, you think he didn't see Pharaoh do some stuff to some people? Yeah. What he was doing to his own homeboys and homegirls. So he says, I don't fear you. I'm, I'm worried about the one that I can't see. Mm. Mm. He's obedient to God. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And so by faith, that, by that's faith. what goes yeah. into 28. It says by faith. And then it says it in 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt. He said, forget y'all. I ain't worried about what man can do to me right now. Yes. But God still tested his faith because we, we know, and, and it's not going to talk about that here, but we, you and I both know, you and I both know, God sends him out into the wilderness yes. for how many years? Do, 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 do. <laughs> like a lot. 40, 40 years. years he spends he was, 40 yeah. years. He spends 40 years wandering around yeah. in the desert. Yeah. Wanting to die, but God says, You the one. You the one. You the one. You you the one that's gonna send back. Yeah. And so I'm telling you today as we close. I meant the answer. Yeah. Because you said you was gonna because a lot of people gave their answers. Okay, what kind of answers do we have? So Miss Womack, 25 years. Earlier, when you asked the question, a lot of people said 25 mm -hmm. years. So, is 25 years 25. the answer? 25 years. It's 10 years. It's 10 years? It's 10 Ms. years. Cotton, and then he tells Ms. Sarah. Miss Valley, Miss Peggy, Miss Rosita. This will come the next year. Miss Jackie, everybody says 25, 25 years. years. <laughs> 10 so. years, and then Ishmael is born. And then it's a year later that Sarah, and then he tells Sarah will get the child next year. And so, he keeps that promise. And the next year, Sarah. So the, so, so the question was, yes, how many years passed from the time he tells Abraham that yes. Isaac is going to be born oh. until Isaac is actually born? And everybody says 25. 25. Is that right? Put your hands together. Oh, Put your hands together. Okay. Yes. Right. okay. Yes. So, so yes. I, I, want, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you. You had another question. Oh, yeah, I got another, another question. question? About, okay. About well, the M bomb. Oh, the who? Yeah. Okay, M bomb. Okay. You said it. Anybody give us an answer? Miss Womack said 40. Uh, uh, wait. For 40 days to M bomb. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, she was the only Ms. one Womack. to answer that one. Miss Womack is the only one tonight, ain't she? Yeah, Miss Womack. Yeah, Miss Womack. What's up, Miss Womack? Right on. Yeah, she answers both at the same time. Yes, Lord. I told Miss Womack. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Lord. Isn't that amazing that these numbers are so significant uh, to what it means that God, and, and what I love about all those. Now, remember 40. 40 is significant. It's a test. It's a trial. It's probation. It's turnaround. It's breakthrough. There's some significant things that we'll discuss along this journey of faith that I think is going to be paramount to all of us. I want to thank you for participating tonight. Thank you for being for, here. For we sending you in your so comments. Uh, we, can't, we can't do this without you. Yes. Uh, and not only you, and when I say you, I'm not just talking about the Roberts Chapel family. I'm talking about your friends. Yes. I'm talking about your close and your extended family. Thank Some you of your colleagues. So much. I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, making this a reality for us. Uh, 
finding it that it is good for your heart, good for your soul to spend this hour and some change with us uh, each time that we come on. I, I pray that you are benefiting from it, that you're getting something out of it, that it is causing you. Remember, my responsibility as the, as the pastor, as the teacher, is to get you to think. Not, not, not necessarily the way that I think, but to get you to think to the point to where you go and inquire of the word for yourself. That it makes you inquire of God for yourself. And I pray that that's what this is, is, actually, is actually doing in your hearts and in your homes. Uh, wherever you are, because hopefully you're with your family. Now, you know, because some people say things like this when we're doing this. Why y'all so close? Why aren't you six feet apart? All those good things. Well, family, when we sit around the table, we don't eat six feet apart. We're family. That's, right. That's what we do. Uh, and I want you, if you're with your family right now, go on and give them a fist bump or give them an elbow bump. Just tell them, here, we made it yeah, through well, another night. Come on, we bet. made it through another night. We, 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 our tanks have been filled so that we can make it through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and come Sunday, we'll be ready to fill you up again. Yes. And so I want you to look forward to making it to Sunday. This week is going to be great the rest of the week for your lives. I thank God for you. Don't forget Robert's Chapel family. Please ensure to check your emails. We sent you uh, ways to give that we can continue to support the ministry. Uh, I want you to continue to do that so that if there is a need and there, there are needs in our church family and in our communities, that we can actually meet some of those needs. Uh, and I thank God for your continued support and all that you do. And, and even beyond tithes and offerings, thank you for your prayers. Thank you your prayers your are significant to us uh, because we need it. Just like we're covering you, keep covering us. And yes. we'll do this thing as a family because we are a church family. And we, do, and, we, and we do this thing together in Christ. Yes. So don't you forget that. That's so important for us to remember. And so tonight, we love you. We thank God for you. I'm going to ask uh, my wife if she'll close us out in prayer tonight. How about Praise that? God. Love you. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we have come together to be surrounded by your word, to learn more of who you are and more of what you have called us to do and be every day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, that you set up high and look down low and make sure that we have everything that we need, that all our needs are met. We thank you for each and every person and each and every family that is represented. We thank you, Lord God, that we have an opportunity to continue to be children of, of Christ. As we move forward, Lord God, in everything that we do, continue to bless us, continue to keep us in all your ways. Thank you, Lord God, that when we meet again, we will still be praising you and loving you and thanking you every day. Let us not forget those, Lord God, who don't know you. I thank you, Lord God, that even in this time that we have together, not just in our homes, but across all so social media um, um, ways, that you can still save, set free, and deliver. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that all hearts and minds will be turned towards you. We thank you. We continue to pray for one another, to bless one another, to continue to love one another, that we can seek you even more. Mm -hmm. We are your inheritance. We will pass on your word. Mm -hmm. We will love better. Yes. We will pray. We will do better. We will continue to seek you because you said if we seek you, we will find you. Mm -hmm. If we seek you with all of our hearts. And we do that tonight. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Sunday at 11 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you.